Hello and welcome to Julie Hall Designs and our block of the month collection which is called Rock the Casbah. Now to start with we are going to begin with this beautiful block here. You can see that it includes applique and the satin stitch on that applique is a beautiful sexy satin stitch. It also includes decorative stitching there just to really highlight the fabrics and the stitching that we are doing. Um, now the requirements are of course included with the block. One thing to note is that I have used for all of my basting stitches a wash away thread. And the reason that I do that is because it doesn't leave all of those threads hanging there at the end of the project. The quilting design is part of this project. However, if you don't want to quilt your project each block at a time, you can simply skip that stitch at the end. Okay, let's get started. So let's get started. The first thing that we've got is we've got our felt and we've got our cutaway stabilizer. Now I've threaded my bobbin here with wash, sorry, my needle with wash away thread. And that is because it is going to mean that we don't leave any of these stitching lines that we've used to hold down the fabric around as we do our project. Once colorway one is completed, we are going to come through and with a sharp pair of scissors, and I'm using a pair of curved um, scissors, a little bit longer than the normal ones that I use for applique, to trim away the excess embroiderer's felt. Now the reason I am not using my applique, my regular applique ones, is because they are much more delicate. And I'm now going to take my white homespun 100% cotton fabric. I've starched that so just adding a little bit of spray starch and again with the needle threaded with wash away thread I'm going to come through and stitch that fabric down onto the stabilizer. And through we come. Now, I am speeding things up in some places. Just do be aware, um, my, the speed that I stitch on is approximately 600 stitches per minute. So now I am threading my machine with the t um, dark teal thread and coming through and stitching colorway three which is our first outline and this is the outline for the applique shape so i'm now going to take my applique fabric and lay it on top i'm using batiks and one of the nice things about the batiks is there's no right or wrong side of the fabric and as we're doing this you will probably be able to see a mistake that I am making. You can see that that fabric is just not quite covering the edge there. It is a little bit of a stuff up. Thankfully on this particular design I'm getting away with it simply because it's a really thick satin stitch that we finish it off with. I'm moving my hoop so that I don't have to take the hoop out of the embroidery machine and I'm coming through with my curved tip squeezers that are just so perfect for cutting applique fabric and trimming around my project. I apologize for you having to look at my arms doing this um, and you want to get as close as you possibly can. You don't want extra fabric being left that just doesn't add to the picture 
that we are trying to create, that luscious applique that we are trying for. So once I've trimmed that applique, I'm returning the hoop to its regular position and I'm coming through and starting the satin stitching around. Now what I'm doing here, as you can see, is just using my stiletto and my pink purple thang to hold that fabric down as far as we can as it goes around the applique. Again, don't worry if your machine doesn't stitch this fast. I've actually sped this up a little bit and by a little bit I mean about 400% and I'm stitching on about 600 stitches a minute. Every machine is different. You're, you need to find the perfect speed for your machine with your thread etc and so forth. Five to six hundred seems to work best for me. I am also using an 1175 um, needle and I am using polyester thread. The main reason I use polyester thread is just because I like it the most. So this is colorway five which is the satin stitch right around our project. And we're going to come through and you can see now that we've done all those underlay stitches and the reason that we use the underlay stitches is to give a better look to the project long term. The underlay stitches help to support the top stitches and you can see what a beautiful um, satin stitch that is creating. Now the other thing that you might take notice of here is that I am using T-pins just as an extra bit of security holding in my um, cutaway stabilizer. I'm using a poly mesh cutaway stabilizer and the, what the T-pins do is just help it to stop from moving. It's not a must-have, but it's one of those things that I do find quite helpful, particularly when it is something like a cutaway. I actually find it more difficult to use when I'm using a tear-away, just because I find the pins actually tear through the stabilizer a little bit more easily. So, once we've finished this colorway 5, we are going to then move on to the other colors. In this quilt, I have used four different color threads. I've used a dark and a medium teal, and I've used a burgundy-ish wine color and a deep pink Having said that, the colours and the fabrics that you use are totally up to you. Um, in the second, as, as we do this throughout 2021, I'm actually going to create a second version of this and I'm going to use different um, fabrics every month and make it much more of a scrappy sort of a project. So it is whatever works for you. Now Satin Stitch does of course take its own sweet time as you can see here. But it's one of those ones that I find is worth doing just because the look of it at the end is just so beautiful. And we continue coming along here. La 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 la. Other questions that I often get asked with applique um, is do you need to use a Visaflix product underneath? And my answer is generally think of how you are going to use the project. If I was doing this 
as um, applique on a t-shirt and something that was going to be worn often then I would probably use Visaflex. The reason I really don't feel the need to on something like a quilting project is that um, it doesn't get the hard wearing use of a um, clothing item and what we're doing is making sure with our tension that that satin stitch and the underlay is covering the project perfectly so it's one of those things that we just don't need to do as much and you can see we're coming to the end here and that is all just going to melt match up at that end and finish off and now we can move on to colorway number six which is our wine color or burgundy color I get a little bit fanciful sometimes with my names but I thought wine suited this one quite well and once again we are using satin stitch to give depth and um, an interest to the design I'm a terrible person when it comes to um, touching the toys I you know whether it be at a museum or a quilt show I'm the person who has to have their hands behind their back because I want to feel the texture in the project I totally understand why they don't let us do that but I I want to be feeling what the um, what the overall texture is Now, one of the great things with the Rock the Casbah collection is not only do you get the block, which includes your custom quilting, you also get the custom quilting design in block size and in continuous quilting size as well. So you are really... Um, getting lots of different ways to use all of the designs that you will get in this project. Every block's quilting is different but because I do them with the same colour thread i.e. to match the background they will all blend in together. and you can see the satin stitch is just coming along beautifully here generally I found that this block from start to finish took me about an hour and 10 an hour and 20 odd minutes and I'm working on the 9 inch block the sizes of the designs you um, you receive in this collection there is the 9 inch size an 8 inch size 7 inch and 5 inch And naturally the style is based on Moroccan or Persian tiles. I've always loved the look of the house that has um, an entryway and every tile is different. I've always thought that was just magnificent. Um, and that's really the look that I am going for here. Every block is different. If you want a larger quilt you can certainly go through and do multiples of different blocks. If I was going to do that I'd probably change the colours just to get it um, 
just to have it looking different. Okay, and we're up to the last bit of our wine colour here. And the next colour we're going to go with is the deep pink colour. So let's come through and re-thread that. Gotta love it when you get your thread caught there. And what the deep pink is going to do, as well as doing the satin in the middle of that applique object, it is also going to do stitching around the edges of the block. I'm just going to move that thread there. Now, what you will notice here is that the stitching that we are doing is over the line that we originally made holding down the fabric creating the edge of the block and that's okay because we've used wash away thread those threads are going to come out Yeah, got to re-thread. Give us just a second. Now I've used a really light stitch here and it's one of the things that I love with playing with thread. You get to decide you know, how much thread to use in each place just gives such different looks to every project. Now the last for the decorative stitching is the teal colour, the light or medium teal, just to finish off our block. At this stage it's helpful if you have ready your um, wadding and your backing fabric while this part is stitching out. So this is colourway 8. It's going to come through here. And trim away all of your excesses, of course. I'm the worst person. I'm very much a do as I say, not as I do when it comes to, um, to trimming my threads while the machine is working. Okay, now I need to change back to my wash away thread. And now that I've done that, I'm going to move the hoop to the trimming position just because it makes it easier to get to. And take the hoop off and lay your wadding on the back of your quilt. Now, if you need to, you can use a little bit of 
um, sticky tape to secure it. However, I found that um, with the tray, um, with the table that comes with my machine, and I'm using the Janome 1500 here, I really didn't need to because it had enough support. And then we are going to stitch colorway 9, which is going to secure the wadding to your finished block. Now, we need to move the hoop back to the trimming position again. Excuse looking at my arm. And we are going to come through and trim away the excess wadding. And trimming this away now is going to make it so much easier to put your quilt together in the end. So once again, you need those slightly larger scissors and you want to get as close as possible. Once you've done that, take your um, quilt backing, lay it on top and using wash away thread again, stitch colorway 10. And that is going to secure the backing fabric to the design. And we are now going to thread our machine with white cotton. Now you can choose whether you're going to use embroidery cotton or quilter's cotton, either way. Um, and sorry embroidery thread or quilters cotton either way makes no difference to me um, I've used embroidery thread I think I just like the little bit of lusciousness that, that it comes with and that little bit of sheen and we are going to quilt and you'll see that the custom quilting is going all around these objects this particular um, quilting design is called the Darling Buds is what I've named it and it's Little Rose Buds over the block. If you don't want to put your blocks together this way, if you just want to make the quilt top and then maybe send it off to be quilted or do an all over quilting, you can certainly do that. And all you would do is stop at colorway in this instance, stop before we add the backings on to, so the wadding and the, um, um, and the backing which means we would stop at colorway 8 after we had used the medium teal thread. So how you put things together is really up to you. We do have a video on how I have used this um, on, on how I've put together the blocks of this quilt. Um, and I do the same thing for both the large blocks and putting any of the blocks together. Please feel free to watch that. We'll have a link for that at the end of this one. And you can see the quilting design is coming through. And we are done. And our block is now completed. Um, what you will see, and I just want to give you a close up on how beautiful that quilting looks. That is just gorgeous. The last thing that we need to do for each of these blocks is to come through and using our scissors. Now, sorry, I just want to make sure that everybody can see this is to remove as much of the excess stabilizer 
as is possible. And what I end up doing is just coming through and trimming along that edge. Just want to make sure that you don't catch that fabric there. That side I've already done. And So our block is now complete and we are ready to trim it up and put it together with the other blocks. So that is our block completed. I hope you have enjoyed this block and that you will join us for the other blocks in the Rock the Casbah collection. As always, if you have any questions, please email me at sales at juliehalldesigns.com. And until next time, have a stitching day. Bye.